What's up, Earth Signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. This will be a collective message for my Earth babes. Uh, so if your Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus is in an Earth sign, uh, this reading is intended for you. That being said, please your, use your own intuition and discernment to separate the messages that you feel are meant for you um, and release what doesn't serve you. Uh, you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is optional advice or guidance. I'm using a ginormous deck that is so hard to shuffle. <laughs> I did actually already shuffle it off camera a little bit, but anyway, we're just gonna we're gonna pick them like this anyway. So here we go. What's what uh, messages can I share with my Earth signs this week for Earth? Venturing down the road alone, are you willing to go at this independently? Are you willing to separate yourself from the pack? The high priestess in reverse. Why Why are you not listening to your intuition? Your intuition is already uh, guiding you and then showing you the way, uh, but you're doubting it. A lot of you lack confidence in yourself. You feel more comfortable at, or at ease in some sort of partnership. And the wheel of destiny. So things are about to turn. Things are about to change. Um, I don't do fear-based readings, but I have to be honest. The first thing I got from this is like, it's almost like it's it, it's been written this way anyway. So more or less, you may have an opportunity or a window of time where you choose to go rogue or independent or ultimately the universe is going to step in and there's going to be sort of like divine intervention that it is a blessing uh some of you aren't going to look at it like that but some of uh, yeah i don't know i just i feel like the universe in reverse it's like are we going to have to step in for you because it's like the universe speaks to you guys you earth signs through your intuition so when you start disregarding that and sort of taking the wheel on your own and maybe not not acting in a way that really supports and owns or practices confidence in yourself. It's like there's an area where there's lack. There's this sort of energetic lag or sloppiness that, that is like chiming in to be the decision maker right now. And the universe is like, oh, fuck no. Like, like we got to step in and help the earth signs because they're you're doubting yourself. Um, and so it's totally fixable, right? But I think sometimes... We just get stuck in life's uh, traffic, right? There, there's horns honking and there's lights changing and like you're just surrounded by people. It feels like a rat race. And so you tend to sort of dim out that that internal voice, that guidance system that we have because it's just like it feels like we're, we're lost in the abyss. So we may be operate at, operating out of fear or, or lack of confidence or just or missing the signs or talking ourselves out of them, you already know what the right answer is. And I know that's so frustrating to hear because some of you are really like, no, I really don't. You're not spending enough time in solitude then because that's when the answers are going to come to you. You're not spending enough time in, in your faith or or let's not even take it there, in nature, right? Separate yourself from, from the craziness, from like the buzz of life and, and technology. Get off your damn phone. I know you're watching this on your phone or your laptop, right? <laughs> After this reading, of course. <laughs> right, guys? No, but I'm serious. Like, if it's going to help you align to where, where you're going to feel yourself again, turn this video off right now, right? Like, I'm in it for you guys, not for me. Like, the, these messages are meant to empower you, inspire you. And some of you, you literally need to unplug. You need to go out in nature. You maybe need to travel outside your comfort zone or just your, your neighborhood, your territory. I'm not saying hop on a plane, guys, right? If that's going to help you, if that's going to reinvigorate you, by all means, you know, Go down uh, or go on a walk, go down a, a trail, a, a path in nature that you've never been down before. Um, we're in Aries season and there's something about Aries where it's not only the risk taker, but it's the start. It's the first. It's the trailblazer. Right. So in a sense, they have to cut their own path. They can't follow the beaten path and, and you know, follow what's been done before. This separating energy of having to do it first or, or be the first one or do it independently. There might be a. I'm hearing indulgence, but that's not really what I mean. A reliance on having other people show you how. And again, this is just one of those things in life. Sometimes we don't have someone there to hold our hand. There's a very um, brave energy that you're being asked to kind of channel this month of, of inner confidence and faith that I might not know the answers, but I, you know, I'm going to dive in head first and figure them out. Um, and again, otherwise, the universe is going to give you an ever so gentle nudge. Um, and usually the wheel of fortune, yes, it is luck and fate and destiny. But I think the word karma here is what I'm getting strongest from my earth 
earth signs is that this was destined. So the universe is kind of giving you like, you know, the heads up via intuition, like, hey, this might kind of be a good idea, like planting the seeds in your head of, of whatever this is, this hermit going off on your own, finding inspiration in solitude. That's very important. Finding stillness, contemplative energy. If you're not doing that, if, if you know, you got buzz going in and out of your ears and your head and your mind and your emotions all day, like there is no stillness. So the universe is going to come in and bring you that stillness. Do you understand what I mean? And I mean, again, these are not about instilling fear in you. That's so anti what I stand for. But just to give you an example, this could be like, you know, work, 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 you know, nine to five, then I got to do this, then that, like there's no peace. And then all of a sudden you get a head cold and you're stuck in bed for four days. That kind of thing. Like the universe is going to intervene some way. So I almost think you would be doing yourself a favor by finding some time and resources to like just give yourself stillness. Because um, a major decision is coming your way um, and, and it's looming. It's it would not be a huge surprise to you. It's almost like this, it's something you've been feeling, but it hasn't manifested yet. So it's very easy to disregard it or write it off. It is coming to the surface. So it's a good time to get prepared for it. And guys, keep in mind, Wheel of Fortune says, hell yeah, this is going to be awesome, but not if you fight it. Do you, you know, open yourself up to new ideas, new possibilities, different perspectives. Um, the universe is coming in to help align you because I think a lot of you are feeling stuck. And again, it comes down to not trusting yourself, lacking faith and confidence in yourself. And then that's also trickling over into other people, too. Some of you are having trust issues. Some of you are sort of operating in this this place of almost like paranoia. Um, I don't know where that's coming from, but again, it's like you're you're burning the candles at both ends. You're running your body ragged. We we got to stop that. Like we got to slow it on down. <laughs> yeah, there's an offering coming your way of of good news. Messages are going to come your way that are informing you on emotional decisions that you're going to need to make or or I should rephrase it. Decisions that are very much going to trigger your emotions and your emotional comfort zone. So that's not a bad message by any means, but if you have very strong attachments or again, uh, codependence, even on a job or a stream of income or, and I'm not saying you guys are losing your job, please don't misinterpret that. But do you understand what I mean? The minute we get overly reliant and attached to anything, the universe kind of likes to come in and shake it up just to show us that we are the pillar of strength, right? It, it doesn't come from external sources, it comes from within. So there's messages coming through that are going to challenge your emotional comfort zone. For some of you, you know, a person may be professing their love to you or their heart to you and you're just like, oh, I don't know what to do with that. That's what I mean. Like it, it triggers you from an emotional standpoint where you really do have to think how to navigate these, these emotional waters. Some of you are, are fighting with a sibling, especially a sibling that you've had a lot of a very competitive streak in you about them. It could have felt like <laughs> it's ironic because you feel this way about each other, but you both feel like this sibling was like the winner of the family. Like, you know, mom and dad liked them so much more than they like you, or they were so lucky and they always won. And that type of dynamic, ironically, this sibling thinks the exact same thing about you. So I'm not, I don't think either of you are operating at the highest level of truth in that dynamic, but there is something about si sibling rivalry where it's like, I think you're being asked to be the bigger person or to sort of go deeper into this this sort of old wound that it's just remained the same or it's been at the status quo of like well I don't like them but it's almost like you sort of forgotten why or and it might be, it might be a friendship it might be like a coworker there's like this it comes off as kind of like this playful um, competition, but I think underneath that you both have some some deeper wounds there where where it's not the most comfortable energy. If this is a friend, you need to not compete with your friends. You need to support each other because otherwise that, that's a fake friend. That's a false friend. Um, and again, where is that coming from inside you? Rather than pointing the finger of, oh, well, she said this or he did that. It's why does your soul feel like you're competing to have the same narrative as this person when that's that's not it at all? You know, you, you guys are entirely different people. So even if you're going to the same job or the same, I don't know, romantic prospect, um, you never have to fight to be where you're supposed to be. You know, again, 
divine timing is at work here, but yeah, there's like a lower vibing, competitive, kind of vicious energy. Even maybe like, I think backstabbing is too harsh because it's very subtle. It, it's very like subtle manipulation or a almost like a backwards compliment. I don't know who this is. It's low vibe energy. It's childish. You you need to get your shit together and get that bad energy out of your life. Um, it's just not worth it because it's dragging you down and it's clogging your intuition and, and your clarity, your peace of mind, your ability to connect with the universe because you're holding on to like this negative, like, I, I don't know, whatever it is. I know I'm giving you tough love right now, Earth Signs. I, I don't mean to come down on you, but ultimately that's what these tarot messages are for. If you're not able to like see the light on your own, then maybe somebody needed to hear that. Like, Cut the bullshit with this, like, you know, sibling rivalry. It's not helping any of you. It's dragging you down, and it's it's a waste of, like, exhaustive energy that you could be putting into your career or mending relationships or supporting this person, you know, when they're down. Give them some encouragement, some empowerment, some advice. Give them, give them love. Give them attention. Give them a listening ear if that's all they need. What if you were to do a 180 and decide that you are going to love this person despite their flaws. Um, you know, despite that shady thing they did to you years ago, what if you chalk it up to, you know what, they were probably in a really bad place. So you know what, I'm, I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to look past that flaw and, you know, I'm going to let them know that I endorse them and support them and wish them the best of luck. Some of you, I know you're cringing hearing that and you're like, oh my God, I, I would never do that. Then why is this person in your life earth sign? <laughs> I'm getting so upset. I'm banging the table. It's like, if this person contributes nothing to your life that is positive and or uplifting and vice versa, if they're in your life and they're like this weird frenemy, what? Like, I just, I don't know what to say to you. This is a wasted energy. Either fix it or remove it. That That's, that's a huge part of why this whole thing is clogged up. It, it's like we got to trim the fat and get rid of the excess so that we can open ourselves up to new opportunities or again to kind of do a 180 and change the narrative about who this person is and what role they play in our life. You guys may end up being the support that neither one of you felt like you got uh, growing up, especially if it is a sibling. You may have had absent parents or or just felt like you were left to fend for yourself or it, very much this could have been like an older sibling feeling like they were given the role to be the, the second mother. And it's like, I didn't ask for that. Like, I'm just the sister. I don't want to be the... So again, rewrite the narrative there. Um, it, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> This is about expanding your mind and expanding your your limited perspective. Again, rewriting a narrative or um, shifting shifting what this person is in your life and, and how you view them. It probably comes with a little bit of uh, empathy and, and compassion. Um, and again, choosing to be the bigger person, choosing to rise above the bullshit. And maybe some of you don't want this relationship in your life anymore. That's fine, but something about you keeps kind of taking the bait when they call you back in. I don't know if it's an X or what, but ships are coming in. It's funny, I keep putting the Wheel of Fortune back in, in the upright. So I think something is just stuck here. But maybe by removing this energy and rising above it, you welcome in change and it comes in a very positive way. Others of you, it's like you may choose to walk away from a relationship that caused a lot of tension, but in hindsight, you're going to understand that that tension was actually forcing you to sort of show up to your life in a way that you never did before. So it was actually positive tension. It was motivating tension. Um, it was challenges that forced you to rise above. And again, you may feel some type of way about this person because it felt like they were needling you or criticizing you. Um, and I don't love that energy. And I don't even think it was happening on a conscious level. Again, it's sort of like the divine stepping in and, and sort of uh, putting this person in a role in your life that was uh, like, you know, nudging you, nudging you until you finally did something. Um, and some of you, when that relationship is gone, you're going to miss it. So I almost think it's saying appreciate this person while they're still around. Or, or some of you, you may choose to cut ties with a friend and realize that they actually did bring something positive to your life, but you got into this weird, again, like co uh, competitive type energy with them. And yeah, it was, it poisoned the well. It, um, I could also see this as friends who become coworkers. And again, it might be something that is very like, um, competition based or, um, <clears throat> commission based, something like that. Um, 
Yeah, it's like what starts off as like this playful little, you know, going up against each other, this opposition, it kind of spins out of control and leaves both people feeling kind of isolated. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's playing a much bigger role in your life than I think you realize. It has to do with like why this high priestess is in reverse. There's a lesson here. And for some of you going cold or silent on this person, it actually didn't solve the issue at all. It, it, it's like rotting from the inside out. So you may be being asked to, to come forward with some sort of important communication that helps set things right or set things straight. And I don't know what this message means, but some of you are just waiting for this person to disappoint you again. It, it feels like you give them an inch and they take a mile or, or they take you for granted or uh, abuse your kindness and energy. And it's it's like there's just this it's a matter of time before they screw up again. And that in itself is a very kind of like lackluster attitude. Um, you know, obviously, if this person shows you who they really are, believe them. But that's no reason not to send good energy or or to be optimistic or have faith that, you know, if, if you encourage them and, and just give them kindness, that maybe they're going to make good on their promise this time or maybe they're going to do something good in the world. Um, it's almost like giving this person the benefit of the doubt that they're not just like a waste or, or that they're, I don't know, that there's more to them than just taking advantage of you or screwing you over or this feels very family dynamic, guys. It, it might be romantic related for some of you, but I just sense that there's this competition of siblings and it's it's very sour but the whole point of it coming through is that the universe wants you to mend this relationship or make it right so that it's not blocking your your channel your 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 connection to the universe it, it's like stopped you up estranged siblings or rivalries sibling rivalries may end up coming together because you both experience a mutual loss in your life and it, it's sort of like the second chance to rebuild on something that was always kind of it didn't have a chance to succeed because it didn't have the right platform it didn't have the right stability to, where this relationship was nurtured in a healthy way you may be the catalyst to do that or the initiator the start Especially my Capricorns. I'm getting strong Capricorn energy here. Yeah, I think you're going to bring this back together. I, I, and I think it's something you do want deep down. I just, I don't know if, if ego is feeding into it or again, the idea of competition or not wanting to show your weaknesses to this person. And the thing is, we're all flawed human beings. We're all flawed individuals. No one is perfect. And I think the minute someone goes around, uh, you know, celebrating and, and, you know, shouting from the roof that their life is perfect and everything is great, they lie in. <laughs> like, n nobody's life is perfect. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's a balance, like anything. Um, it's not letting your grief and sorrows and challenges hold you back, right? It's not sinking into victim mentality, right? That's sort of the, the opposite. Um, versus, again, this sort of glossing over and glamorization and, you know, creating this fictional narrative of my life is so good. I see both energies. I, hear, I see someone who likes to play the victim because it gets them the emotional nurturing that they need and that they, they lack on their own. And then I see the other person putting on kind of this, this false mask of life. Life is good. And, you know, if I don't talk about my problems, they're not real. I don't have them. There's a lot of like kind of. There's a lot of like deep mental um, barriers, uh, strains that are that are keeping this relationship from coming together. I could potentially see this as sort of like a. a I don't I don't want to say twin flame, but like a, a karmic in your life where it's just, it, it's it's riddled with challenges and, and mysteries and um, stubbornness. There's a lot of stubborn energy here too. <clears throat> but I will say this person does bring something to your life that you do need to recognize and realize. What triggers you about them is something that is an internal trigger, but you are projecting. Um, if this person is constantly, I'm just giving you this example, you know, celebrating on social media and look at me and my life is perfect and selfies and blah, blah, blah. It's almost like an internal message to you is like, are you afraid that you're never going to be happy? Or are you 
too self-conscious or ashamed of your own narrative or your own body or your own success. Even though you want to celebrate it and you want to be accomplished, you don't feel comfortable doing so. Like, you know, like, it's really worth going inside and sort of asking yourself, what about this person, this opponent, if you will, this person who's like this opposition force in your life? What is it trying to pull out of you in a healthy, vibrant way? It really does have to do with your own sort of internal issues. Um, and it's a karmic. It's a trigger. It, it's sort of that the universe brought you two together so that you could learn from each other. But if you both come at it, you know, fisticuffs and this, this sort of, you know, duke it out energy, you're missing the gift of, of this person. You're missing the spiritual gift of this, this connection and this, this energy exchange. So, again, up to you if you want to take advantage of it. But, it, again, I do keep getting this message. The universe is going to orchestrate this the way it, it, it is meant to be. But when the universe has to step in, that's more like tower energy, right? Like, we're going to force it upon you, even though it was a long time coming. You, you chose not to be the bigger person or chose not to initiate that thing that, that really needed, a, a, you know, action. Aries energy. Take action on it. Um, others of you, you may choose to have sort of a, a peace talk. I'm sort of getting like the idea of like a peace treaty or, um, yeah, to open the lines of communication. And I will say... You may send off a message or a text, um, and I, I would really encourage you to do the thing where you're not, you're using the word I a lot, right? You're not saying you do this and you do that. Try and remove the, the idea of blame and just come at them honestly, an honest expression that will require vulnerability, very important, you know, page of cups, explaining where you're at. You may send off this message, and I'll be honest, it might be a few weeks before you hear back because this person is processing what you said. Again, it, it's emotionally triggering. You guys are, are being forced out of your comfort zone of emotions, whether you're very uh, open with your emotions to the point of maybe being a little bit messy, right? Not necessarily practicing emotional intelligence or very likely the opposite for my earth energy because, you know, you're opposed by water and emotions. You may be the type of person who keeps it really buttoned up. But then if you don't cathartically, you know, express that and allow the emotions to move through you, it gets bottled up and then it comes out like, you know, like a tower. So anyway, someone may come forward with an emotional truth and explain their side or, or try and get you to see their perspective or where they were coming from. There's a bit of a delay in hearing back, but I do think it comes because I think for some of you, there is a mutual desire to make this work, but we have to get out of our stubbornness, our, our stuck energy of my way or the highway. Channel that higher self, uh, the, those messages from the universe. What do you think the universe wants you to try and see from this dynamic and this situation? Um, open up your intuition. O open up to receiving messages from the universe about this person. <clears throat> Two of Cups. Soulmates, attraction, companionship, feelings, partners, true love, affinity. If this is romantic, I'm not saying, oh my gosh, they're going to run back into your arms and it's all going to be lovely and romantic again. And it's like the honeymoon stage of this is, is definitely gone. Uh, is it salvageable? Yes, but this may end up being something where you just decide to be friends. The seven of wands. You, you slowly start to let your guard down and, and let this person in a little bit. And obviously this won't be a message for everyone, right? If you got out of a really messy relationship where someone was toxic or abusive, I'm, I'm not at all saying let them in, right? Again, if it comes down to catty, petty, immature energy and this competitive, like, again, like if you're, if you're both trying to kick ass in, in, in your work or the business world and you're not rooting for each other... That's a giant red flag in this relationship. Why are you not rooting for the people in your life? You know, it, it comes from insecurity. I can tell you that. Yeah, I, I think most of you are slowly going to start to let this person in, but you may have to regain trust of each other because there may have been some some blurred boundary lines and you, you lost faith or you lost trust in this person and vice versa. Defiance and defensiveness. Yeah, we, we got to ease up on that. <laughs> Anyway, let's get some powerful, some powerful, happy quotes. You got this. Anything is possible and everything can be. We'll get a couple for you, my earth babes. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Live for the moments you can't put into words. I just, I like heard some phrase in my own head when, uh, 
the higher your vibe, the smaller your tribe. I think that's true. Some of you may, may have gone or will choose to go down a more spiritual path, and you're going to start to recognize a lot more shadow energy around you. Uh, and again, you can come at it with compassion. Everybody is fighting a battle that maybe you know nothing about. So rather than judging them or, or criticizing them, you may choose to part ways with them, but to still kind of, you know, internally, like, wish them well, like, send those vibes out into the universe. Um, but yeah, some of you, it's like this can't, this may not ever come back to be the the fun friendship or the the playful romance it used to be because something came through that really changed up the relationship. And again, the whole point of it was to get you to see something about yourself. Um, as you raise your vibe, uh, your yeah, like it lessens your uh, what's the expression? The higher your vibe, the smaller your tribe. The more connected you are to the universe, you're going to start to see that that your principles, your guiding principles, your system of belief, it, it might not catch as wide a net, but there's nothing wrong with that. You can be selective um, about who you cho choose to engage with in, in a really intense way. Um, it, it's okay to let people exit your life. If they're meant to be there, they will come back. Every day is another chance. We'll do two more. Grow through what you go through and then take the road less traveled and you'll find joy. Love it. All right, Earth Babes, that's what I got for you. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments uh, below if any of this resonates, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.